A model steamboat named Edith. Part 24. Safety valve replacement and how to make the brass boiler bands. In this clip I'm replacing the safety valve which is a standard Stuart model safety valve. I don't like these and I'm fitting it because it was fitted to the boiler in the first place. But then I realise that it's no good because it's going to need a pipe extension to take the steam from within the hull to the outside of the hull. So immediately after fitting the safety valve I removed it. I'm going to try a modification which may or may not be successful. So it's over now to the lathe to drill a hole all the way down the centre of the valve. And I'm going to thread this hole 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. And luckily I already had a double union so I modified this to fit in the top of the valve. And I'm using the milling cutter to just mill a recess to locate the spring. So when it was all fitted together it looked like this. And the principle is now I can connect a pipe to this which will connect in turn to the pipe that goes up the side of the chimney on the superstructure. The pressure gauge has to be fitted this way in order to make it simple to read the pressure. And please note that a pressure gauge siphon does not have to be the U shape that you normally see them in. As long as it's a length of pipe, water will condense in the pipe and therefore the pressure gauge will not be damaged by the hot steam. In this clip I have some compressed air pipe to the boiler and I'm testing the safety valve and trying different springs in an attempt to stop the safety valve from making the usual horrible noise and blowing off all the time. I tried various stainless steel ball and spring combinations and in the end I gave up on it. So instead of the Stuart model safety valve I fitted a Jubilee fitting safety valve. This is a pop type safety valve so it blows off and then it goes pop as it shuts. Jubilee fitting safety valves are available from my friends at Blackgates Engineering and the web address is currently on screen. To evacuate the steam from within the hull I'm just going to make a fitting that slides over the top of this safety valve held in place by a couple of o-rings just like I did before when I rebuilt one of the other boats for the same customer. So the boiler is all ready for steam. It's completely airtight when I disconnected the air supply and shut the valve the pressure remained at 60 pounds per square inch and when I opened the valve obviously the pressure disappeared. I mentioned in a previous episode, the episode when I fitted all the planking to the boiler, that the boiler planking is really held in place by boiler bands. In this clip I'm cutting a piece of brass boiler banding to shape. And boiler banding is also available from Blackgates Engineering. There's no great skill involved in making boiler bands, you just have to make sure that the boiler banding is cut to the correct length. The boiler banding needs to overlap by about a quarter of an inch. Then you remove the piece of boiler banding and drill a hole in each end. Here's a good tip though, do not make both of the boiler bands at the same time. Make the first one and then use that as a pattern to copy the length onto the second piece of brass. And that way you will get boiler bands that are exactly the same size. I always make sure to remove the sharp edges of boiler bands so I don't cut my fingers. In this clip you can see me trimming the ends of the boiler bands using my one inch belt sander. These vertical one inch belt sanders are a really good addition to the workshop. I use this one most of the time. So with two boiler bands exactly the same length with holes drilled in the end of them in exactly the same place, I just use a pair of pliers to bend over the ends and then a 10BA bolt to go between them. And to finish off the job so there's not a long piece of bolt sticking out underneath the boiler, I use my small barco spanner to snap off the excess thread. These 10BA nuts and bolts are quite small, so be very careful not to drop them on the floor. You will need a very fine screwdriver to hold the bolt in place whilst using a nut spinner to tighten the nut. And of course, do not over tighten these, they're not very strong at all. Once again, I'm snapping off the excess. But I'm not throwing away these pieces of excess 10BA thread. I put them back in the box with the bolts because you never know, I may need to make some 10BA studs in the future. So this is what the boiler now looks like. Normally on a boiler of this size I would use three boiler bands. But in this case I'm using the original boiler band which will hold the boiler in place on the mounting inside the boat. And that's it for this one, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.